Hey guys, what's up? By Zach Detron here from One Hive Cassette, here with the next video reviewer episode. So the first one of these videos that I made got kind of a mixed response from you guys, but the overall trend seemed to be positive that you wanted me to continue during this series. I got a bunch more submissions for other videos I should review after I did the first one, and they kind of were all over the place, but more recently, there's been one video, and it's kind of surprising because this was only uploaded about a day ago, but still, in that amount of time, I've gotten, I think, two, no, three different people uh, suggest that I do a video reviewer on this video. It's by Clash with Ash, and uh, the title is 103 War Wind Streak: How Engineered Base Chat in Clash of Clans. Basically, it's talking about engineered bases, which have kind of come to the uh, spotlight in Clash of Clans. It's kind of the new modding, a lot of people are saying. So I think because it's such a hot topic, that's why people wanted me to talk about this subject. So today, we're going to watch Ash's video, and uh, you know I'm going to give my opinions on what he's saying and all that kind of stuff like I did in the last video. But anyway, before I start, once again, a few disclaimers. Uh, these are just my opinions, not the opinions of anyone in One Hive Genesis or the One Hive family. I did cut away parts of this video just to speed things up for the sake of time, but I encourage you guys to check out the full video if you're interested. Link will be in the description, but the parts I cut away are indicated by the black, uh, fade to black transition. And finally, I do respect Ash quite a bit. I watch his videos, uh, some of them I am subscribed to his channel, uh, so I do enjoy some of his content. Uh, this video is not meant to clash with Ash, and that was an intentional pun. So yeah, but anyway, all that being said, um, hope you guys enjoy the video. Let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, let's go ahead and watch this. <laughs> Hey guys, Ash here. Hope this video finds you all doing well today. I actually found this post on the forums earlier today, and I thought it was kind of interesting. Obviously, the uh, the post, the, the original poster here uh, mentions that he has issues facing engineered clans a lot in Clash of Clans. So for those of you guys that don't know what an engineered base is, it's basically a .5 taken to the extreme. You're trying to have your offensive level be far beyond what your defensive level should be at that Town Hall level. So people in One Hive might wait, you know, a few weeks when they get to Town Hall 10 before they drop Infernos to let their offense upgrade a little bit. Uh, it's basically doing that, but completely maxing out your offense with a very little regard for your defense. You're trying to keep your defense low on purpose because that's what your war rate's mainly based off of, while keeping your offense very powerful so you have an advantage in Clan Wars. So I decided to visit one of these clans with one of these epic wind streaks, uh, Winterfell gods, that were kind enough to let me come and visit them, uh, go ahead and highlight their war log, and talk about their wind streak. They've won 103 clan war matches in a row now, and they're not a typical engineered clan, but they do have some, you know, borderline engineered base uh, bases. And I want. So I don't want to spend too much time on this point, but. Personally, I don't think he should be going to a clan that has quote-unquote borderline engineered bases just because it's kind of promoting it and, uh, you know, I wouldn't do that on my channel. It's his channel. He can do what he wants, so I'm not going to spend too much time, but really, I don't think it's the best idea to show people that this is a thing they can do to kind of exploit the system. Because honestly, I think you can make a good case either way on both sides of the arguments. And some days I feel one way about this engineered thing, and then the other days I feel a different way. I think the most important thing here is I think Supercell in the Clash team specifically needs to break their silence on this topic. I think it's getting a little bit out of hand on both sides. I think that there's more and more clans doing engineered bases, and there's also more individuals doing engineered bases. And as a result, there's more people than ever complaining about it on the forum so maybe this is the way that uh clan wars were meant to uh to meant to go here they were maybe this is how they were intended to be these engineered clans engineered bases so in that little segment i was actually agreeing with him uh it definitely super sound needs to in some way if this is not how they want the game to be played they need to stand up and make it so that this is no longer an effective technique to win wars but then he kind of lost me by saying it could be possibly uh, the intention and honestly, I don't see any way that could be possible with Supercell making it so that uh, Like foreseeing that in the future This is going to be the new thing because it can be taken to the extreme so far You can have no defenses and have Town Hall 11 offense It's a very slippery slope and I don't think there's any way this is how Supercell actually intended for Clan Wars to be played 
Again, Winterfell Gods not necessarily a classic engineer clan. You can see here as I scroll through their bases, uh, they actually do things the right way. They have some very simple rules regarding upgrading on your bases. We're going to take a look through all their bases a little bit here just to show you guys what type of bases they have designed. Okay, hold on a second. Take, take a look at this base right here. This is probably, I mean, look at the, you have the level 1 Expos, level 1 Infernos, uh, level Town Hall 8 level Wizard Towers. Um, a few of them are Town Hall 10 levels, like the Archer Towers, the Teslas. But really, this is probably a very low Town Hall 10 weight. And it looks like this has Town Hall 11 maxed offense. That looks like an engineered base to me. Like, full-on engineered, not really any kind of shaded gray. Largely, it's kind of like the .5 upgrade system as far as how Winterfell Gods does things here. So maybe their lower level bases do do the .5 upgrade system, but the top base that we just saw does not, and I'll tell you why. It even basically has the answer in, on the screen right now. Uh, for a .5, if you're like a Town Hall 10.5, you kind of have to have maxed out Town Hall 10 defenses. Now you can have, you know, max 11 offense, max 10 defense, you're still technically a .5. But when you have stuff that's not even maxed for Town Hall 10, and some things not even for Town Hall 9 on that base, uh, it's way under any kind of 0.5 in terms of defensive weight. So that's not a 0.5, that's more of an engineered base as the term goes. So you can see here their bottom bases, they're not engineered, they're just really uh, low bases. They're not, uh, you know, an, a typical engineered base would be like this. I'll flash one on the screen right now where you have max heroes with no defenses. Those are what people really think about when they think of engineered base designs. Not these bases, these ones here that we're looking at now just basically prioritize their offense over their defense. And let me just be... Okay, so he's just showed their bottom, you know, third of their bases, which doesn't matter if it's engineered. These bases will be three-starred anyway, and uh, you can see their offense and defense, they're both really not that good. So typically it's going to be kind of a wash on the bottom as far as the matchup goes with the other clan. All that matters really in these uh, wars, and that's the reason they've won 103 in a row, is because the top bases are all that matters, especially in Town Hall 11, 10, and 9 wars. So you can see, yeah, these bases aren't really engineered, he's right about that, but it honestly doesn't matter if these bottom bases are engineered or not. And let me just be really clear right now before we get too far ahead of ourselves here in this episode as I scroll through these bases that uh, I don't think that engineered bases, no matter even the defenseless bases, just me personally here, I don't think that it's cheating because it's allowed in the game under the rules that we're given. There's nowhere in terms of service that says that engineered bases is wrong. So some people might rightfully or wrongfully think it's a slimy or cheap way of playing the game, but it's definitely not cheating in terms of the term of service. Yeah, I agree it's not the same thing as like modding. It doesn't violate terms of service, but it's another in-game exploit that Supercell needs to fix. The real question here is, th is this how the Clash team wanted Clan Wars to be played? Is this what they intended the overall Clan War dynamic to look like with this many engineered or cater-made bases? I've said before I think the answer is no, and I'll explain a little more why. Basically, you can take this system of engineered bases all the way to the point where you have an entire clan of almost all Town Hall 11's maxed offense with no defenses. Obviously, you're going to need a few high-level defense bases just so you don't get completely three-star, otherwise you'll have no chance of winning. But you can take it that far, and that's not even really even Clash of Clans anymore. It's not how we know Clan Wars at all, and I think there's no way that Supercell intended for wars to kind of turn to that, because that's the extreme of this system that he's talking about. Odds. Let's just uh, quickly bring up a few counterpoints. I'm going to flash those on the screen. This is a really nice response I felt, and, and it explains some of the situation in terms of the other end of the spectrum. And these are actually really good points. Uh, it basically, Tango Fever here says the problem, uh, one of the problems here with engineered bases is perception. And he goes on to list three very good points. All right, a lot of the video is talking about these points, but let's just uh, shorten this up a little bit, um, taking a look at this. Basically, this guy is saying that match, matchmaking is not as bad as it, as it appears or as how many people complain. And I guess that's true to an extent. People think your mirror is a reflective of your own weight. Uh, they compare town hall level, clan level, uh, bias, disclosure of details. So yeah, there's people who are saying, you know, hey, we're in a bad matchup, but... Uh, really, it's, maybe it's not. But really, engineered bases create mismatches. I don't think this changes anything. 
Uh, your weight is heavily based on your defensive level, so by having a low level base defensively, but a high level base offensively, you're giving yourself an advantage in the matchmaking system. So yeah, maybe people exaggerate sometimes, but for these kind of engineered clans, they are trying to get mismatches, and that's why they're winning, because they're getting those mismatches. And you're going to see what they're typically matched up against here. Okay, so you might have noticed how the clan had five max Town Hall 11s offense-wise on their side. Take a look at the top bases on the enemy clan they got matched up with. You can see that so far things are pretty even so far as we climb up, but look at this, the top five bases on the other side of the map, so far all Town Hall 9s, and remember, the first Town Hall 10 is base 2, the second Town Hall 10 is base 1, but that's it guys, not one Town Hall 11 on the other end of the war here, and that's a huge advantage for Winterfell Gods, compounded by the fact that they're all really good attackers as well. So yeah, I don't need to explain that much because it's obvious that opponent clan's top five bases are Town Hall 9s and Town Hall 10s mixed. Going up against max Town Hall 11s, I think you guys know how that will end. And if this is what all their matchups are like, it's insane. These are ridiculous mismatches. And I know Ash is trying to stay you know, neutral and journalistic about this. But thinking about it, I mean, these are super easy wars for this clan. And they're basically going to destroy any clan uh, that's a uh, normal match as far as the system is concerned because it'll just match them with these kind of bases because that's what their weight is. So I think it's a little weird because he's not taking a stance that I think almost everyone would have watching this video that they're exploiting the system whether or not it's within the terms of service I don't think matters that much simple but their biggest rule is that in Winterfell Gods you're not allowed to drop any of your town hall level defenses any new defenses so that could be a new expo it could be a new inferno tower it could be uh, a splash damage no matter what eagle artillery for town hall 11s you're not allowed to drop any of those defenses at all unless you can consistently three star other bases that do have those defenses and that's pretty much their golden rule they you can see even if if you visit their individual bases, which I won't do right now just for time's sake, but you can see they all have defenses uh, upgrading right now and they all have builders ready. It's not like these are defenseless bases. All right, let's stop for a second and throw up the base uh, that was the number one base again real quick. First of all, there are bases that are much more engineered to, than this, just to get that out of the way. But while we're still talking about this clan, uh, I want to basically make my point, which is that you have an engineered base if you have defenses that are consistently not max level for the town hall level below you. So if you're a town hall 11 and you have, you know, town hall 11 offense for the most part, you should have almost exclusively town hall 10 max defenses or above. And that goes for being a town hall 10. You should have almost exclusively town hall 9 max defenses or above if you're starting to upgrade your offense to the town hall level that you are. And as we look at this guy's base, because remember the top of the, the top five bases or so, or what are 99% of the war in most cases, you can see that this base is not max for Town Hall 10, not even max for Town Hall 9 and Wizard Towers and Expos, and that's consistent across most defenses. It only has a few, you know, Archer Towers, te uh, Teslas, air defenses that are actually maxed out. Really for Town Hall 10, they have very few max Town Hall 10 defenses. So yeah, you can say, yeah, they're upgrading their stuff, but they're doing it systematically to get these mismatches. And I think that they are almost as, in my opinion, exploiting the system almost as harmful in that sense as, you know, defenseless Town Hall 11s, because it's the same thing. It really doesn't matter that much. As long as they're that far ahead in offense, that's all you need to get that advantage to be able to win a war. So I ask you guys, is this right or is this wrong? Is Winterfell Gods playing within the rules? I think they are, especially when compared to more egregious examples where some clans literally have the entire bottom of the war map are defenseless bases. Now, I'm not sure that I agree with that, but at the same time, it's not really cheating. So I don't know. What, what do you guys think? I think it's time for Supercell, the, the dev team, or somebody to write a blog post or even respond to one of these posts in the forums. Just kind of touching base. Is this okay? Okay, I mean, they removed Town Hall sniping in the December update. That was a huge, huge, huge change in the game. I don't need to tell you guys that, but that's because the game wasn't being played as they had intended. Will they make big changes to affect this, to affect this, this matchmaking? As you so as far as what Supercell might do about this, it, it, he's right in the fact that 
Supercell did make the change to farming because that's not how you were supposed to play. But remember, almost everyone did that, put their town hall on the outside when they were farming so they could get that free shield. That was pretty much a universal thing. We're not seeing engineered bases anywhere close to that, and we're not seeing a huge complaint from the war community, or as much as uh, we would see, because arranged wars prevent that. You're not going to do an arranged war with a clan that has a ton of engineered bases because they don't match up with you. So I think that, that because of that, and because not a whole lot of people are doing this, at least yet, I don't think Supercell is going to be as inclined to act on it. Now, if it does become a bigger thing, we could see them make a change. But unfortunately, I'm not sure if that change is going to happen unless it really becomes a widespread thing. At this point, he talks more about the matchmaking system, which I don't think is that relevant to kind of the discussion, at least in this video. So anyway, um, just to summarize, really, if you guys want to see what your war weight is, take a look at one of your gold storages or your elixir storages on preparation day. Multiply that by five, and that is your quote-unquote war weight. And lastly, guys, I just wanted to end today's video by proposing a uh, a semi-band-aid. I wouldn't say it's a solution, but proposing something, and I actually mentioned this as well to the Clash team, and they seemed pretty receptive about it, but who knows if we'll ever actually see it in, uh, in game. But basically, I'm calling for a little numerical transparency, which is a fancy way of saying that, hey, guys, Supercell Clash team, can you tell us what our base strength is? It doesn't have to be the exact metric or the exact algorithm breakdown, but just give us a number from, from 1 to 100 and just allow the players to see their own base strength and then allow us to see the aggregated clan strength of our war so we can tell how heavy we are as a total clan and it will just take a little bit of the paperwork, uh, so to speak, uh, off of our shoulders on our end and, and, you know, just give us a little bit more transparency in the game. I think that's an interesting proposal that he brings up, and I think that would be helpful to see kind of what your weight is in more plain terms. You can do it the way I just said a few moments ago, but that would make it easier for a clan, especially for doing arranged wars. Uh, but beyond that, I don't think it's going to solve the problem, because even if you know what your war weight is, it doesn't stop people from engineering their bases to have a certain war weight, and they get a mismatch against your clan. So that the solution I propose is this. There's a, when you go to, let's say, Town Hall 9, there's two bars on, on your profile that you can find. One is your offense, one is your defense. And as you upgrade offense and upgrade defense, the corresponding bar increases as it gets closer to being max. It starts out right at the beginning of Town Hall 10, and on the other side of the bar is a max. And your offense and defense have to stay within a certain proximity to each other. So maybe within half a Town Hall level. So once your bar goes up, you know, you're at Town Hall 10, you just made the upgrade to Town Hall 10, and you've just done, let's say, half of your Town Hall 10 offensive upgrades. Once you get to that point, you cannot do any more offensive upgrades until you add some more defensive weight. It has to stay within, you know, half a Town Hall level. You can change that as you want. But I think by making people stay within kind of certain boundaries in that sense, it'll help keep Clan Wars uh, at a good place because there's no reason people should be having uh, their bases, you know, be so much higher in offensive weight than defensive weight. So that's kind of my solution. Anyway, though, at this point, he wraps up his video with a few more things, but I'm going to wrap up mine. Basically, in conclusion today, guys, I think that uh, Ash brought up a point or a video topic that needs to be brought up. So I think that was awesome. I don't agree completely with his opinions. I think he's kind of overlooking some of the uh, negative parts of these engineered bases and overlooking what an engineered base really is but it doesn't have to be that extreme to have a huge impact on a war but that being said I think that it's good we're talking about this and if enough people you know make enough noise Supercell should listen now I know I say that when they don't listen you know historically but hopefully they'll make a change because I think although it's not that widespread it affects a lot of different clans especially clans that aren't doing arranged wars they depend on these random matchups to have good wars, they're getting cheated out of a war by getting mashed up with a clan that has engineered bases. So I think that needs to be changed. And my solution, Supercell, feel free to use that. No copyright. So anyway, thanks for watching. Let me know what you think uh, on this subject in the comments below. And as well as if you want me to continue making these types of videos, uh, let me know. So anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys later. Bye, Sectatron out.